ladies and gentlemen, it's your buddy, it's your pal, Spaz Phoenix, the YWC reality check, back with the Raw 28th Raw Super, eh, May 28th Raw Super Show review. I, uh, when I, when I botch writing my own notes, you know it's awesome, but it doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody, look me in the face right now. I loved this Raw. I love this Raw. You guys know this video is going to end with score fail and MVP. There is only one fail this week. So let's get into it. We come into the show with a recap of Laurinaitis beating Cena. Big Show, what Big Show did to Cena last week. I start off the show as a happy boy. Big Show comes to the ring, cuts a phenomenal promo. Says, comes to the ring with a fake smile on his face. Says, ah, you know... I love you guys. I love this. I love all of you. This is me smiling because it's my job. It's my job to smile. It was my job to make all of you smile. But now that I'm on Team Johnny's side, I can be myself. I can be the giant. I've got a job. I've got a bonus. I am set for life. I am the most, you know, dominating sports figure there is, better than anybody in the NFL, better than anybody in the NBA, better than anybody in the WWE or any other wrestling company, better than any other, you know, fighter in the UFC, etc. And he goes back into his spiel from, uh, from last Friday about how he got fired and nobody cared. He replayed, and this is what everybody got really, really hung up on when he did get fired, the very next thing we heard was Brodus Clay's music, and you know, all the goofball bullshit that comes with that. Showed the clips of him and R-Truth and Kofi Kingston and all the kids in the ring, they're all dancing, they're all happy, nobody gave a shit about him. And it makes sense, right? Then he turns to Cena, and he said, you know, Cena came down to get in Laurinaitis' face later that night. I figured John Cena, who was supposed to be my friend, would get out there and stick up for me, but instead he did the stupid, you know, Jim Carrey, Mr. Anderson loser bit, you know, going out there, having jokes, having a good time. Meanwhile, here I am, I've just been fired. You know, I have no friends, I'm on my own, a giant, you know, lives his life on his own, all the stuff from his promo on Friday, and I thought it was great. And he says, Cena hurt me, so I hurt him twice. And he says it with a big smile on his face. And when I beat Cena at No Way Out, it's going to put a big smile on my face. Best promo I think I have ever, ever heard from the Big Show. People were saying that the promo that he did on SmackDown was the promo of his life. This one blew that one out of the water. Made me a happy boy. Now, we have Alberto Del Rio versus Santino Morella. And my big worry is, holy crap... Here's Alberto Del Rio, who's supposed to be the number one contender for the world title, being wasted on Santino Morella, when the last person Santino Morella fought was uh, Alberto Del Rio's announcer, because, you know, Santino's not killing the U.S. title or anything like that. They replay the Santino versus Ricardo bullshit. Uh, Alberto Del Rio goes in there, kicks Santino around the ring for a while. Santino tries to goofball back with the Cobra. And what do we have for all you Santino marks out there, for all you Alberto Del Rio haters out there? Alberto Del Rio, how shall I put this, kicks the head off the Cobra. Oh, yes. And when he locks in that cross arm bragger and Santino Morella taps like a bitch, oh my god, it was beautiful. Oh yes, you know, Santino is not the new mini Cena, he can lose a match, look at that, and, and a submission, he tapped out, he gave up at that, this great, this wonderful, upstanding, you know, worldly, inner, or sorry, United States champion that's supposed to have all this, you know, credibility of being a mid-card champion, tapped like a bitch like a bitch. Go back to fighting announcers, leave the real wrestling to the real wrestlers. Go to the back. Eve tells the Big Show that he can pick any opponent he wants tonight. He runs into Alex Riley, who looks all scared, says, don't worry, I'm not gonna pick I'm not gonna pick you as my opponent tonight, but I do have a message for you to give the rest of the roster. Grabs him by the back of the head, makes him eat concrete wall. You know, Alex Riley gets a little bit of time on television and eats wall for it. That's tremendous. Tag Team Championship match. And here... Here is where I went in thinking, oh, this is going to be horrible, and came out being a very, very happy boy. Our boom versus Jack Dolph once again. Lots of double teaming by our boom. And here's the thing. I've been saying I hate the team of Ziggler and Swagger for a long time now. When Swagger was out of the ring and it was a two-on-one handicap match on Ziggler, it was a better match. 
Let's just say that. They tag team on Ziggler for a while. Truth hits a sweet DDT on Swagger. That's got to be said. Little Jimmy's Revenge by Truth on uh, on Swagger. And Arboom gets the win. Ziggler walks out on, uh, on Swagger and Vicky screaming, I'm better than this. And I'm thinking, okay, this is going to go somewhere good. I hope. I hope. Big Show confronts Santino and Doctor tries to get in the middle, says you can't confront him, you can't pick him as your opponent tonight, you know, he's already hurt, da 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 da. Big Show has him by the throat in the face and asking him, you know, hey, do you think my being fired is funny now? And of all people, Brodus Clay steps up and, you know, tries to man up to the Big Show and says, oh, well, why don't you fight me tonight? I'll give you another reason to cry, mocking, you know, the whole fact that Big Show, when he, uh, when he got fired, was crying and all that. It's like, uh, Brodus Clay is the one of all people that's going to step up to the big show and it's like ha huh, Brodus Clay's going to have balls tonight that's 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 amazing anyways we come back from break we see, we see a big uh, message on the screen saying the BSR campaign has been recognized i'm not sure how US congress works i don't live in the states but they've gotten some sort of you know note of recognition from US congress for the BSR campaign that's amazing. That's awesome. Be a star is a great, you know, initiative. Even though, you know, wrestlers telling people not to uh, not to pick on each other and not to bully each other is kind of eh, questionable, but it's still a great idea in theory. So congratulations to them. John Laurinaitis comes out in the People Power Mobile with Eve and Otunga in tow. Announces that Cena versus Big Show at No Way Out will now be in a steel cage. Awesome. Announces that Big Show will in fact face Brodus Clay tonight. Okay. Announces that he is one of the most popular stars of all time, and as proof, he's going to show that there has been a groundswell of of people wanting him to be a character and be the cover uh, cover person of the new WWE 13 game that's coming out October 30th. Then he uncovers a fake game cover with him, in fact, on the cover. Punk comes out. As he's walking to the ring, he leaves a big, you know, spooge of gum on uh, on Laurinaitis's scooter seat, which I thought was hysterical. He says, no one wants you, no one likes you, and by the way, here's the real cover. You know, holds his arms up, big fireworks from the roof, and a huge banner comes down with the real cover, which, uh, for those of you that don't know, does ha in fact have CM Punk on the cover. And, you know, he's, he looks up at the big banner, sees the little sign that John Laurinaitis made, and says, you know, I've never been able to say this in a public way before, but Johnny, mine's bigger than yours. And then he makes a couple random comments to even we go on and he says look you can't put me in any kind of crazy ass match tonight because I've already got a match with Daniel Bryan so take the Hoski and Carlton and get out of my way so I can go on and beat Daniel Bryan tremendous you know pipe bombs galore gets rid of all of them brings out Daniel Bryan for another punk versus Bryan match and what do I really need to say I've got I've got the notes for this but it's really one of those Daniel Bryan versus CM Punk you don't really need to say anything else but you know, the CM Punk chants were rampant, the U the yes chants, if there were any, were not audible by me. P uh, basically, the story of this match, because these guys can tell a great story in the ring. Punk was the striker tonight, and Brian was working on Punk's arm. Lots and lots of quick pin attempts. Rob, uh, Brian, I, I don't know where Rob came in there, but Brian uh, was working over Punk's arm a lot. A lot of quick pin attempts. Brian hit a superb knee strike to the face from the top turnbuckle, twice on Punk. Somewhere in the middle of that, AJ came down in a CM Punk t-shirt, which I marked for incredibly. Um, Daniel Bryan then hit two successive arm stunners. That's what I'm gonna, because WWE fails at announcing what the moves actually are now, it means my knowledge of what they actually are fails, but basically, you know, bring the arm over the shoulder and bring it down like you would bring somebody's head if it was a stunner. But he does two of those, still working the arm. Bryan starts messing around with the turnbuckle, trying to use it on CM Punk, and AJ, of all people, lets the ref know. Interesting, but uh, Brian trying to get AJ away from the ring creates a distraction. Uh, CM Punk is able to get in there with a quick kick and a near fall. Brian, however, still is able to use the exposed turnbuckle on Punk. Brian gets the win. Here's where life gets even more interesting. Kane comes down with a chair and starts owning Brian like a motherfucker with the chair. Then he turns his attention to Punk. Now, AJ, who's on the outside of the ring, hands Punk a chair. Punk wears out Kane like a motherfucker. So Kane leaves. Brian leaves. Punk is standing in the ring, you know, victorious chair above his head and all that. And in front of the announcer's table on the other side of the ring is AJ looking almost orgasmic, looking up at Punk. This is a great story. I don't care which way it goes. This I love this story right now. Then, 
if that wasn't, ba you know, great enough, you guys know who I like. I'm a fan of Christian, even though he's not in my fave five. Let's just slide that in under the radar. But uh, Christian versus The Miz with Cody Rhodes on commentary. Thank you, WWE. It's not my birthday today, but I still appreciate the thought. Um, Miz versus Christian, non-title match. Miz looks great uh, in this match. You know, Christian is solid. It's great to see Christian back. He makes a great Intercontinental Champion. Miz looks great. Uh, Christian comes back after a while of... You know, Miz dominating the match for a while. Christian tries for the spear and eats Miz's boot like a fucking champ. Uh, Cody leaves the announce booth uh, after a little while. Him leaving causes a slight distraction for Christian, which we think is going to be either, you know, Miz getting a quick win or Cody Rhodes getting involved. Neither one of them happens. Uh, there's a series of skull crushing finale to kill switch to skull crushing finale to kill switch counter attempts. And eventually the kill switch and the frog splash does get the match for Christian. I'm a big fan of the Miz. I'm a big fan of Christian. The fact that Miz lost this match doesn't hurt my feelings in the slightest. Christian, Cody Rhodes, somewhere along the line, probably at no way out, is going to be a great match. And this is the thing. You had Miz in there, you had Cody Rhodes in there. You had a great opportunity for either a double team on Christian, or for Cody Rhodes to come in and screw up the match and cost Christian the match. Neither one of them happened. So the, antici eh, the anticipation, and then the, you know, I'll leave you alone, I'll get my shot in when the time is right, element gave a little bit of a different feel to this feud and I like that a lot. I'm really really intrigued. What do you guys think? Leave me a comment down in the bottom. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you wish it had just been a two, uh, two on one beatdown or a bullshit ending? I don't know. I like it. I think the fact that they switched it up a little bit is great. Come back from break. Ah, hold on. Hold on. I misplaced myself. We go to the back. We see Laura Knight is talking to Otunga and Eve, telling Otunga and Eve that he's, in, he's disappointed with both of them. Because in the last week, both of them have disappointed him. Otunga was supposed to beat John Cena last week on Raw, because, yeah, that's going to happen. And Eve failed to get an apology from Sheamus on behalf of John Laurinaitis on SmackDown. So to make it all up for, to make up for all of that, Otunga offers to take on Sheamus tonight on Raw, and we're thinking, okay, Otunga's got a death wish. That's awesome. Miz is still in the ring when we come back from break. He, um, he's, he's saying that they should strike the match from the record books. It wasn't even for the title. Why don't I get any title matches anymore? I won the match at Mania that gave John Laurinaitis his job. Where's my recognition? Where's my title shots? Where's my, where's my thanks? More or less. Orton's music hits. And I'm thinking, okay, are these guys going to have a match now? Orton comes down to the ring very slowly, letting everybody think, okay, what's he going to do? Is there going to be, you know, a fight? Is there going to be a verbal thing? Walks into the ring, RKO's him, and that's it. And that's amazing. And, and then he just goes up and does his posing thing and whatever. Now in the back, we flash back to the backstage area again where we see Vicky and Dolph Ziggler watching Orton posing on the Titantron. Vicky and Ziggler are arguing. He says, look, if you want to make me a happy guy, if you still want me to be, you know, one of your clients more or less, you got to get me out of this tag team that's dragging me down. I need to be a singles guy. I need to go out there and shine. I need to be like that guy there. And he points to Orton who's still on the screen. I'm thinking, yes. Absolutely, yes! WWE gets it, finally. All right. Now, we see a promo for, apparently, Punk is going to defend the WWE Championship on SmackDown against Kane. Doesn't really make much sense, because it's the Raw title, and yes, we know the brand extension means so much these days, but whatever. We'll go with it. You know nothing's going to change on SmackDown, but whatever. Otunga vs. Seamus is a squash. Sheamus wins. Nothing really else to say. We have an announcement that there's a WWE unreleased Volume 1 DVD coming out. Always exciting. Always cool to go back into the WC... Er, sorry, the ECW vault and, uh, and pick out uh, different matches and moments from there. I, for one, got on the ECW bandwagon a bit late. I had friends try to get me into ECW after it was already basically over. I wasn't paying attention when ECW was at its prime, so the ECW unreleased uh, DVD is probably something I'm going to pick up, apparently. It's available next Tuesday. Now, Big Show vs. Clay, or what was supposed to be Big Show vs. Brodus Clay. Um, Clay goes to the ring doing his usual dancing, Funkadactyl, Funkasaurus, Funketeers bullshit. Show stops on the ramp with a microphone, basically calling Clay a sellout, 
and he says, hey, when they get sick of this gimmick, they could always paint you up and make you the next doink. Uh, Brodus Clay tries to come up the ramp and confront him. Big Show starts off with a spear and basically owns him from there. Basically kicks the big chubby boy all the way around the ring. Clay actually tries to fight back, which is kind of amusing. Works him over along the, uh, the, the metal ring post a lot. Um... Kofi, Kingston, and R-Truth try to come into their defense. Kofi tries. He gets tossed into Truth there down for a while. Show puts his own th his own foot through the commentator table, which is awkward, and it's kind of like, hey, that's how you lost the Intercontinental Championship. Why would you do that again? But whatever. And then he takes the side panel of the desk and beats Brodus Clay down with the side panel. Then uh, turns his attention to R-Truth, beats up R-Truth some more, chokeslams Kofi Kingston sideways through the, uh, through the timekeeper ring announcer area where the timekeeper and Lillian Garcia, or whoever the ring announcer usually are, that little square area beside the commentators, chokeslams him through that sideways. Really, really awkward looking bump, and kudos to, to uh, Kofi Kingston for that. Um, weapon of mass destruction on Clay, and then he basically leaves as quietly as he came in, and that's how we ended Raw. Guys, that was, um, like I say, I had a lot, a lot, a lot of fun with this Raw, and there's only one fail in my score fail and MVP. So, um, I'm going to start with the fail. The only fail I have in this night at all was that Alberto Del Rio, who's, you know, next in line for the World Heavyweight Championship, was wasting his time tonight with Santino Morella. That's it. Other than that, look at how many scores we've got. Show's opening promo was phenomenal. You know, he's not just a big, dumb lug that's there because he's large. He can cut a decent promo, and he can do it very, very effectively. Santino actually lost a match. Woohoo! So, you know, U.S. title isn't totally doomed. Ziggler and Swagger might be splitting up, which means Swagger's going to go like this, and Ziggler's going to go like this, hopefully. Um, Brodus Clay actually has balls, you know. I still don't like Brodus Clay. I still enjoyed immensely the fact that he was destroyed tonight, but the fact that they tried to give his character some dimension and tried to actually give him some balls tonight was a nice change. We have the announcement of WWE 13 coming out in October. Um, that in itself is amazing. Also, CM Punk, Captain of My Faith 5, is on the cover. That doesn't hurt my feelings in the slightest. Now, Brian versus Punk. Match-wise, match-wise, Brian versus Punk is always gold. Now, story-wise, you got Brian versus Punk. It tells a very, very interesting story because WWE is doing their damnedest to make these guys look very, very even. Very even, you know. Even if you watch one of their matches, they both, you know, get around the same amount of near falls. If one of them gets a dig at the other one one week, then it's going to happen the other way the next week. They're trying to keep the keel very even between these two. And it's a very interesting story to tell. Now, when you throw in the variables of AJ Lee and Kane, pretty much anything can happen in this storyline, and you can't really go wrong. Throw in Kane against either one of them. Kane's a great guy to make either one of them look good going into a bigger match. AJ plays a very, very interesting card, and I'm sorry, I said it before, I know this is not the way that it's going to go, but a pairing of CM Punk and AJ Lee would be the next Edge and Lita. And for those of you who know what a big fan I am of Lita and a big fan of Edge, you know how loaded that statement is, but I believe it and I stand by it. Uh, Christian versus The Miz tonight was a decent match. Uh, Christian versus Rhodes somewhere down the line, probably at No Way Out, uh, will be a great Intercontinental Championship rematch. But here's the thing: it may not have gotten him a title yet, but Christian, or sorry, The Miz has looked dominant and within victory of both mid card champions in the past little while. Santino. You know, he looked dominant when, even when he lost to Santino. When he beat Santino definitively, it wasn't for the title, but he still ended up looking good against him. He looked great in the ring with Christian tonight. Not to say that he smoked Christian or that Christian pulled out a squeaker victory. No, Christian earned his victory tonight, but The Miz was right there in pace with him. So if they have him looking great against both mid-card champions, maybe whoever's wife he fucked in the writing department has gotten over it, and he's finally going to get some decent booking. Moving on. The Randy Orton theory for tonight was arrive, RKO, leave. I like it. It's simple to the point, and it got him, you know, it got him the big pop because he took down the, you know, the annoying heel, which is always nice. 
the last score I have on this sheet is that there was no John Cena tonight. And no, that is not just a vindictive statement because I don't like Cena. His rival right now is The Big Show. Tonight, if nothing else, established the dominant nature of this new heel Big Show. And the fact that it was not answered by John Cena only made him look the better for it. Only made him look that much more dominant. If he had dominated all night and then Cena had come in and cleaned house like he always does, like a good little Superman, it wouldn't have meant fuck all. But we ended, we began and ended the show with The Big Show. We started with The Big Show's psychology. We ended with his physicality. And that is a great way to build a monster heel. I like it. WWE, keep it up. And yeah, any night without John Cena on it is always a better night. Look at TLC last year. Anyways, let's look at the fave five. Punk is having an okay day. He's on the cover of the new WWE 13 game, but he lost his match tonight to uh, Daniel Bryan and a turnbuckle exposed. Uh, Orton made quick impact, had a quick crowd pop, and had, didn't have anything bad happen to him, so he had an okay night. Ziggler lost the match, but he won in the long run if he gets to break away from sw uh, from Swagger and Vicky. Rhodes didn't have a match tonight, didn't have a confrontation tonight, but was great on commentary as usual. Miz's bullshit booking had him losing another match on the losing end, always as he is, but even in losing efforts, he is, you know, he's not at the Dolph Ziggler level yet, but he's at that level where it's almost a Dolph Ziggler, where he can look phenomenal even in losing efforts and like I say he's you know looked great against both mid card champions now so that's got to get him something along the way and MVP of the night I can't remember the last time I gave MVP of the night to a diva but AJ for a diva in the divas division is what we usually look at and call a piss break she is probably the most deciding factor in the WWE title feud that is very very impressive for a diva this has been a fucking phenomenally fun raw for me to watch even better even more fun for me to talk about uh yeah i hope you guys are excited as i am let me know down in the box below let me know if you just think i'm off my meds tonight but for now i've been spaz your ywc reality check subscribe up there talk down there start a conversation keep this conversation going don't be a stranger i'll talk to each and every last one of you but for right now i am tagging out bye guys Get up, come on.